Since yesterday marked the first day that rideshare services and taxis could not pick up travelers coming out of LAX at the curb, a change many people are quite literally protesting while some others welcome it. Yes, the day has finally come. LAX reports smooth sailing after day one of the new LA exit system, but of course, not everyone sees eye to eye with the change, requiring travelers to catch a not so nearby shuttle or walk to a separate lot where Ubers, Lyfts, and taxi cabs are allowed to pick up. Here to help us break this all down is senior contributor and LA rideshare coach for the rideshare guy, Sergio Avedion. Welcome, Sergio. Good morning. So day one of LA exit, it's in the books. What are we hearing about how things went? It's in the books. It didn't go that well. <laughs> but, you know, this is the first day. Uh, some kinks have to be worked out. And LAX is not the only airport that's switching Ubers and Lyft pickups to separate locations. Boston Logan's Airport did it about a week ago. San Francisco International did it about a month ago. Uh, Seattle SeaTac is, is testing it. So it seems like a trend that's, that's going in the country at the moment. And how are those ones going? Are we going to be able to look to those other uh, airports that are implementing this to see how maybe it's going to transition here in L.A.? Uh, San Francisco Airport had major issues for about a couple of weeks, and then it seems like they worked the kinks out. But uh, the layout of the airport is different. I mean, all airports are different. So um, at the moment, it doesn't seem like the numbers make sense to me. So um, LAX is built on a loop, um, and that loop is about a mile and a half long. So 260 to 270,000 passengers go through that loop on a daily basis. LAX has become the second busiest airport in the country, right behind uh, Atlanta. And uh, the airport's old. I mean, it was built in the 50s and it was re refurbished in the 80s for the Olympics. Um, it's just too much traffic for that mile and a half loop, basically. Mm -hmm. So. It's a lot of traffic. We know that loop very well. We travel in and out of LAX a lot. And we, we have developed a little bit of a hack that we call our ride share ride the second we're wheels down on the runway because there is a lot of traffic that can cause the waits to be 20 minutes. We've seen 25 minutes. The airport is saying that if this continues, if the previous system were to have continued, we would see traffic on a daily basis that's as bad as like the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Are they wrong about that? Um, well, they're not wrong about that. So as far as numbers are concerned, Uber and Lyft do about 26 to 28,000 drop-offs and pickups on a daily basis. So LAX is only open about 21, 22 hours a day. Um, so you can imagine that's about 1,000 to 1,200 cars per hour. So assuming half of that are pickups, so 500 cars to 800 cars are ordered on an hourly basis to do pickups. Well, now all those pickups have to be transferred to this new lot that can only handle 90 cars at a time. This is total. Uber, Lyft, and taxis. Well, how's that going to work out? How those numbers are going to come together? I, I don't know. But I think what has happened is that I was taking some screenshots of Google Maps yesterday just to see how traffic is in mm -hmm. general. Um, the loop actually looked pretty good. Well, but there's it, no cars in it. There's <laughs> no cars in it now, right? So, but what happened is that um, on a, they started this on a Tuesday. Tuesday is the slowest day at the airport. Now, I'd like the real test is going to be on a Monday morning where all the business people are traveling. Sunday nights, especially between 6 p.m. and midnight. Oh, great. You guys have been there before. I'm landing Sunday night at LAX awesome. between 6 p.m. You're going to give us a live report. <laughs> give oh, me a call. Well, yeah. I might not have time. Them. <laughs> so, so we'll see. We'll see how it's going to go. But I think, you know, initially every, uh, you know, every airport that did this had some issues. But, hey, um, it is what it is. Uh, and now I'm thinking of a hack. Uh, on my own when I travel is that for the first couple of weeks at least until things settle down order yourself or get on the first shuttle that you can get on for hotels uh, for take parking a hotel lots shuttle. take a hotel shuttle get out of Dodge mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then order your or Uber right in front of the hotel and, and then you'll, you'll be able to just get out because faster. and you also said that you can't even really park at the hotel now I mean at, at the airport now because at, that's construction right inside the loop you cannot park so I mean you, you could but then it doesn't make any sense to park at LAX anymore. Most people are using Uber or Lyft just to not pay the 25 or $30 a day right. charge that, that LAX you know, fees are quite high. But they're still that. allowing black cars or mm -hmm. SUVs through Uber, I believe. Uber and, and Lyft. And Lyft to pick people up on the curbside. So what's the rationale behind that? Oh, there is no rationale, really. I mean, it's just <laughs> basically what they did is they completely redesigned the pickup and drop-off areas. Drop-off is still happening at the departure levels. Um, downstairs, 
so LAX is built on two levels. Arrivals are downstairs and departures are upstairs. Um, I, I think SUVs and, and Lux categories are going to do better just for the fact that people may even pay more now yes. just to yeah. order those types of cars as opposed to going through the trouble and, and waiting 45 minutes to an hour. Imagine if you flew from San Francisco to Los Angeles, your flight took an hour, you have to wait for an yeah. hour that's, for the car. That's what people are tweeting, that they were in lines longer than their flights yesterday. Or imagine if you I, flew I, from... I believe it. <laughs> imagine if you flew from, uh, I don't know, Tokyo to Los Angeles, yeah. you just spent 10 hours on a plane, the last right. thing you want to do is wait another hour for your car. Now, you were mentioning to us uh, before we started here that Uber's also testing a PIN system, which could complicate this entire process even more. So what does that look like, and, uh, and how's it going to work? So uh, before... Um, when a driver got a request, they're in a massive holding lot for Uber and Lyft. There are about two, three hundred cars in there, uh, which is about a mile away from, from the loop. So um, you would get a request, you would see the passenger rating, and that's pretty much, a, a, and the terminal that you're supposed to pick up the passenger at. Once you got to the passenger, you would, they would get in the car, you start the ride, you see their destination. Now. Uber is testing at the same time with this LAX situation. They're testing a six-number uh, pin system. So the a driver is basically <laughs> do drive. Yeah, do a lot of numbers. So what happens is the, the major issue with that is a lot of people are on Wi-Fi, LAX Wi-Fi, and then now this LAX parking lot is outside the airport. So their Wi-Fi may not work if they don't have cell reception. Uber may not be able to send this code or pin to the passenger on time. Oh, well, geez. once they get in the car, the, pa the, the driver is clueless. Driver has no idea what's happening now. So oh. if the passenger did not receive this pin in time, now imagine you get in my car, yeah. you don't have the pin. Well, I have no idea where you're going. Right? Oh it's messy, God. Sergio. I, uh, it's so messy. I can't yeah. wait for my, my incoming Sunday flight experience. to LAX Sunday, Sunday night. I'll have to let you know how that goes. That's <laughs> Sergio Avedi. I'm the senior contributor and LA driver coach for the Rideshare Guy. What a day for you to join us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Big day.